welcome back, my sweet honeysuckle petunia babies. Hope you're well. Tipsy history. <laughs> Not drunk history, because I do want to remain a somewhat respectable, educative influencer. To do the top seven stupidest, funny things from history. Like, just really dumb stuff that you've probably never heard of before, but like, it's just silly. It's just silly. In a silly, goofy mood, you know? Please like, subscribe, all the above. Um, I will love you greatly. All right, let's do this. <sighs> yes, it's the beaker again. Don't at me. Um, <laughs> the lolly might be a better change, though, but it's not. Which I feel like is the appropriate vibe for tipsy history. I'm drinking out of like a protein cup and this drink tastes terrible. There I said it. Some better tasting brand needs to sponsor me because I will drink unmarked drinks on this channel unless I'm paid to do so. Anyway, <laughs> number one on the list is that Hitler smelt like shit. Like the guy stunk. He suffered from the most dreadful gas complaints. He had a very extreme diet um, and was obviously like as cooked in like a physical sense as he was in the brain. Um, like everyone who met with him was like, he farted and it stunk like shit. And then would complain. Like that's how bad it was. Like, I don't know, like I've been in situations where like, like a friend accidentally farts and it's like, ah, oh, you know, like you try to like make it as comfortable as possible for the person because it's like, how uncomfortable is it? It's like so awkward. But imagine like, <laughs> every one you meet can't be around you because you stink so bad he had a doctor's prescription like we literally have medical records of Hitler frequently having to have various prescriptions to attempt to limit his fighting and it did not work the, the great war of 1932 I am an Australian, and this is an important part of Australian history that we all need to remember. The Great Emu War that we lost. The emus won. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The emus literally won the war. <laughs> so it's, it's 1930. And the white people are having a terrible time. It's an economic depression. The farmers are like, look, th this is not, like, we're not having a good time, boys. These emus are out of control and they're ruining our farmlands. So the Australian government is like, all right, let's declare a war on the emus then. Um, so the Minister of Defense, George Peace, who literally was like a, like we're talking like the World War I period, right? Like he literally was a war commanding guy, you know, a big dog. He got a whole bunch of World War I soldiers to go out and fight against the emus. The soldiers 
went out and found a thousand emus grouped together. That is the thing of nightmares. They are freaking scary. The scariest animal on this earth, and I will, I will fight on this hill, is a cassowary. Okay? Basically an emu with a hat. Like this hard, like big hat. Second to that is an emu. I will die on this hill. Like emus are so frightening. Anyway. These World War I soldiers see a thousand emus. Thing out of nightmares, right? So the soldiers go in. The emus group together into a formation and charge at the soldiers. <sighs> Honestly, I think I'm going to have a panic attack. <laughs> have you ever heard something so frightening? A thousand emus charging at you. They tried to kill them. I'm pretty sure they harmed a lot of the soldiers. In the end, the emus defeated man in the greatest, most glorious victory of all time. So, oh my gosh, I can't even. The thing is, it's like this happens to this day with like kangaroos, camels in Australia, like kangaroos and stuff, like they're culled constantly. There's so many of them. But the fucking emu <laughs> emus, don't mess with the emus, you know. They were trying to use the emu feathers to make hats, you know, like make it, like not just to kill them, to kill them, but to actually use the resource of a dead emu. Yeah. On the first attempt, the men traveled to Champion, a place, um, 50 emus were sighted. Now the birds were out of range of guns at this point in time, 1930s, you know, guns weren't great. Um, the local settlers, keyword settlers, so they're white people. I guarantee the Aboriginal community in this area would have just been like, would have just been like, it serves you right. So they ran towards the 50 emus no luck, emus turned around and charged back at them because they're, they're literally Satan. So they bring in machine guns and they only kill a number of birds, like a small amount. The general hears that in the south the emus are not as aggressive. <laughs> so he moves his soldiers south. At one stage, Meredith went so far to mount machine guns to his truck. The machine gunner's dreams of point blank fire into a serried masses of emus was soon dissipated. The emu, <laughs> the emu command had evidently ordered guerrilla tactics and its unwielding army soon split up into numeral small units. The emus keep causing chaos. So they're like, you know what? Let's give this a second go. Um, and they wounded 2,500 birds. Did they die? No. No, they did not. Okay, the next on the list, number three, is the time that Napoleon was attacked by bunnies. <laughs> so they were going hunting for sport. And so they released 300 rabbits, right? There would have been like a whole bunch of dudes there too, because they were going on like a rabbit hunt. You know, you know what, you know how white people do that. So like <laughs> they released these 3000 bunnies to like run off so they can hunt them. And instead of running, the 3000 bunnies turn around and run towards Napoleon and attack him. They must have sensed that he was like a psychopath or something. Number four, the War of Liechtenstein. 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 Liechtenstein? The War of Liechtenstein. 80 soldiers went into the war. 81 came back. <laughs> In 1866, Liechtenstein sent out an army of 80 men to participate in a Austro-Prussian war, right? None 
of the 80 soldiers were injured and 81 returned because they picked up an Italian friend. <laughs> A plus one! <laughs> Finds like not that funny because like I get it. Um, Castro, this guy that really loved cheese, was like, I need cows to make more milk. So he breeds the Obre Blanca. Mommy, mommy. Yes, Jack. So much. I love the bunnies. Bunny, bunny, bunny. Happy Easter. Oh. Oh, you're gonna go fishing? Yeah. Oh, you don't wanna join on mommy's video? I will on my fishing. Okay, you go fishing then. He's gonna go fishing. Anyway, his cow makes more milk than any other cow. I don't really see, like, I don't really see why that's funny. Anyway, like, good on him. Gets more cheese, you know, and cheese is important. <sighs> the Palace of the Sillies and Feces. Um, there are no restrooms, um, so people would just literally take a shit in the corner of the rooms. <laughs> and they would just like sweep it up every few <laughs> days. What the hell? <laughs> Um, there was no indoor plumbing and so many people made complaints about the terrible smell inside the palace. Um, and people would just like take a dump in the gardens and do a little wee wee with their like bunches of skirts. Could you imagine just like this woman with like all this fabric over her? Just like doing a squat in the bush. As the situation was getting more disgusting, uh, King Louis the Eighth, X I V, uh, called for weekly cleaning. The fact that it was cleaned less than weekly is appalling. X <laughs> the next number seven holds a special place in my heart because I was one of those kids that was forced, forced to learn Mozart on the piano. My mum and I used to have a fighting, like yelling, screaming, crying battles to get me to practice the piano. From the age of six to now, I still play sometimes, not really. Uh, anyway. I learnt the Suzuki method, which had a lot of Mozart. Um, so I particularly enjoy this one. Um, Mozart was offensive in his language. So in 1782, Mozart <laughs> composed a piece called Lech Mich im Ach which literally translates to kiss my ass. type of language was scandalous in Mozart's time um but basically f Mozart was known for it he told his cousin Maria Mozart in 1777 um saying I shat on your nose so it runs down your chin seven I think 
think it was seven. Anyway, love you guys. Subscribe, follow, like, blah, 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 blah. Tell all your friends, tell your mum, tell your sister-in-law, tell your neighbour that you don't really like about my channel. I don't even care. You know, send them all my way. And I'll send me all you hate to my channel. And I'll just be like, hey, you're a dick. You know? Whatever. I love you all. Bye. Thanks for watching.